Hey, how's it going today? Uh, this is Dr. Dan. Now, while I do a lot of videos for my students, today is actually a video for my fellow teachers. And today we're going to be talking about Gradescope. Gradescope is the technology tool that I've used over the last about five years or so. This probably saved me more time than any other tool. And so I'm going to make a series of videos, this being the first one, to talk to you about. Uh, this first one's going to highlight why do I use Gradescope? Why do I think it's effective? Um, and then the future ones will actually go through some walkthroughs, kind of a 100 level, uh, you know, Gradescope 101, then a Gradescope 201, talking about a little more advanced grading techniques. And so those videos will be coming out next. So let's dive into a comparison. All right, so here's a comparison table, at least from my perspective, comparing hand grading to canvas quote speed grader grading and then also grade scope grading. Okay, so three columns across here uh, and then looking at a series of topics. So let's talk about rubrics. Okay, rubrics are a really powerful tool for grading. And the thing I love about grade scope grading is that you can recycle rubrics. Uh, you can also edit them on the fly. Okay, we can contrast that with both hand grading and speed grader in Canvas grading. And for those, you basically set up your rubric up front and then you're kind of stuck with it. Okay, you can't edit it on the fly. You can't really change point values. In Canvas speed grader, you actually have to create new rubrics every time you make edits to them. It's just not a very efficient process. And so um, grade scope for the win in that one. All right, now let's take a look at the actual grading process. Um, so if we think about hand grading, hand grading, right, we're marking the errors in the rubrics. Uh, these are often living in a separate place, right, a separate sheet or on a spreadsheet or something else. And you often have to then provide the student some kind of a key for abbreviations or whatever else. Because, I mean, you don't have time to write all those different things, all those comments on the paper. Getting into speed grader, there are some um, useful keyboard shortcuts. Uh, but there's only problem level rubrics, okay? So there's not like assignment level rubrics that are possible. Um, grade scope grading, we can, uh, the rubrics live right beside each problem. They can be selected with keyboard shortcuts. And I'll keep coming back to this topic. Keyboard shortcuts are massively a massive time saver um, as we use uh, grade scope. Uh, next, feedback. Right, and so feedback, I alluded to this a little bit in the grading, but giving feedback to students to me is one of the vital pieces of doing the grading, right? It's not just the point value, but it's also what they could have done better. And handwriting the same thing over and over and over for hand grading gets really laborious. Um, Canvas Speaker does have some limited functionality of a comment library, but the problem with that is that all your comments for all your different assignments all live in one place and they're hard to navigate among. Um, the thing I like about Gradescope grading is that you can have rubrics as LaTeX equations and code snippets and you can format them. And then you can also have specific um, feedback topics, which are essentially the rubrics plus you can add extra comments. Okay, so there's two levels of essentially of giving feedback. One is the text in the rubric and second level is going to be the comments themselves. Um, then we're on to post grading questions, right? We all make mistakes in our grading, even though we do our best. And of course, if you're hand grading things, you get in-person um, questions or an email, really similar actually for Canvas speed grader, speed grader. It doesn't really have a tool for, for handling uh, regrade requests, but Gradescope does. Gradescope um, has a tool where essentially students um, when they're viewing their graded assignment, can say, I want to do a regraded request. A little window pops up. They can type in exactly what their request or what their comments are. That comes to both you as the instructor, also to the person who graded the problem if you're using graders. And then you can take a look at the problem, um, edit any of your, the rubrics, the grading, and then reply to them. You've got a record of all these back and forths, and it's a really tidy system, very efficient. And so I really like that. Next up, grade entry. Man, I do not miss alphabetizing papers. Um, also flipping through papers and just you know putting these into a place where you can actually then quantify the grades and then upload them into your um, into your LMS. We use Canvas. Now the nice thing about SpeedGrader, it is L it is uh, integrated into Canvas, and so moving grades into the Canvas gradebook is seamless. It actually wins um, that category because it's already inherent. Uh, inside the Canvas tool. Uh, Gradescope grading actually has more statistics available, and so that's really nice. Again, whether you have an assignment level or a um, problem level rubric set, you can get statistics on those, uh, and it does allow synchronization with the LMS. It is a manual process. Click a button, 
important, wait for it to sync. Um, so if you do any additional changes or edits over in Gradescope, you do have to sync it again um, to get those to show up over in Canvas. So again, a little bit of advantage there for speed grader grading, um, but um, one of the few um, among this table. Problem navigation. Um, again, in hand grading, you're flipping pages, right? One page to the next. Um, I tend to teach large classes, and so myself and my graders will take, you know, one problem, and we grade all 300 exams of that one problem. And so you get really used to flipping to that same page, but it still takes time. Now, in Canvas, there are page level views. But pages are slow to load. All of Canvas is, is slow to load. I would say like, you know, I, I click on something and I take a deep breath because that's what I need to do to stay calm and also just to use that time wisely uh, waiting for Canvas. Gradescope is really fast as you move among problems, move among pages. Uh, you can have keyboard shortcuts to move among problems and pages. And it actually preloads the adjacent um, problems and pages. When I say uh, pages for a multi-page assignment and then problems for like the, the the student before and the student after you can flip to those real quickly and so it's quick to navigate quick to move around it also has these um, analysis windows and so when you're grading you get less distracted because you can just zoom in to just the box um, that you chose to look at um, for that grading so that's pretty efficient Anonymous grading, uh, if you do use that, um, of course, if you're hand grade, you have to use some kind of a cover sheet or student code for anonymous grading. Both Canvas Speed Grader and Gradescope Grading do offer anonymous grading. Uh, I'll be honest, I haven't used either one of them, so I don't have many comments on those. Now let's move along to kind of a bullet point of all the things that I think are really great about Gradescope um, as we move forward. All right, so here's my summary sheet on all the things that Gradescope does for me. I'm going to start with saving time. I estimate that Gradescope saves me about 50%, which is twice as fast as hand grading. Uh, it used to take me probably a minute and a half or so to grade a full page partial credit engineering problem, and now I'm down under a minute. Um, you know, so on 300 students, maybe it used to take me eight hours, now it takes me four. Half the time, it's incredibly fast. A little bit of the time in the setup on the front end, but then no time on the back end, everything's streamlined once you get all the grades completed, they're very easy to export and everything else. Um, a lot of this time saving comes from the keyboard shortcuts, okay? Having everything set up into your rubrics. Once you get rolling, you actually memorize all of the different rubrics and you know that that was a one, three, four error, right? And I use my 10 keypad um, to do a lot of my grading um, incredibly fast once you um, get rolling through. Next up, also saving time. Multiple graders can grade at the same time simultaneously and you can always check on the progress of the team. Right, so you can see where everyone's at, see if they have any questions. If they do have questions, I have my graders send me a text or send me an email. I can take a look at what they're grading. No papers to shuffle. We can all see each other's work. It works really, really well that way. Improving feedback. Gradescope provides problem level rubrics that can be recycled and customized for new assessments. Now, again, I also have some assignments like homework, I actually do assignment level rubrics. Those are just as easy to set up, but I like the problem level rubrics um, and it keeps a record of all those, not only a record of the rubrics, but a record of all the old assignments. I can take a look back at the data. If I have a similar problem, think about using again, see how that problem worked. Uh, but and I'll, and I'll dig into these rubrics and how to customize them um, actually in the 201 video um, that I'm going to produce. Uh, Gradescope also um, doesn't just take points off or give in. Each rubric allows a custom message, right? And so I actually really get into very positive messages. You should have done this. This could have been this as opposed to this was wrong, this was wrong, this was wrong. Um, and so instead of just getting a check mark or an X or whatever else you've used in the past by hand, um, this gives the students a message um, with that that is really quality feedback. It improves consistency. Um, every student with the same error receives the same score and the same feedback, right? And I've actually, I would say that my um, questions about grading have been reduced by quite a bit um, after I switched over. Instead of saying, hey, my friend got these points off for this error, everybody's getting the same thing. None of that happens anymore. Um, also, both student and instructor maintain a full digital catalog of all graded assignments. Um, if there ever happens to be any um, ethical questions that come up about copying or whatever else, you have a record of the assignments. Um, as, a, as the instructor, the students have a record of the assignments. It's never down to like, oh, I can't find these things. Also, I'm finding it valuable now. We're doing our ABET accreditation next year. I can go back and pull any assignment I want um, over the last five years since I've used Gradescope. They're all cataloged. 
Um, also, the statistics, really powerful to have quality statistics. I'll show you this in the future videos um, for evaluation, inform future assessments. I go back and take a look at a problem and say, did this question work? Was the, how was the grading on it? What did I do? How did the students do? And get a lot of feedback. Um, this adjustment um, during and after grading is to me is huge. So we always start with a solid intent of a grading plan. And it is best to think about, all right, how am I gonna grade this problem? But Gradescope allows you some flexibility. How many times have you been started to grade something and realize like, oh, I set that rubric to um, take off too many points for that, or maybe I should have an additional rubric that allows for this. With Gradescope, you can edit things all the way until the point you release it to the students. Um, I guess in theory, you could do it after you release it to the students, but I cut it off there um, once the student sees it, I leave it be. So Gradescope makes it easy to edit your descriptions. You can add, again, bold, italic equations and code snippets um, so they can really get more of an idea of what they did wrong. You can edit point values um, during or after part during or after grading. Um, and actually sometimes on the partial credit, I will, I will post adjust the point values on different rubrics if I feel like they're either too harsh or sometimes I'll actually do it to limit the amount I need to curve that assessment. Um, maybe there were, you know, again, if I was made it too hard or the grading was too harsh, I can back that off all the way to the point that I release it to the students. So another thing you can do is eliminate unused rubrics, right? Sometimes you set up a rubric and you have maybe an extra one in there that no one made that error or possibly over time you evolve that error into another one, whatever else. You can eliminate cognitive load by just getting rid of those that aren't being applied. Um, the two things that uh, it's still difficult to do, and these are gonna be difficult to do no matter how you grade that, um, is to change your general approach right how you're valuing the problem because you've already selected rubrics for specific things and so you can't go back and then change hey this rubric is going to be some, for something different if you have to do that you're going to have to regrade everything now there is a way to zoom in on just the um, exams that that one item or that one rubric was selected on and i can show that in a future video but it's again you have to stick with your approach once you get rolling and then the other thing that i've wanted to do every once in a while but just doesn't work. It's for the same reasons. You can't take a rubric and say, hmm, I'd like to split this into two separate errors, right? Again, there, you could do it, but you're gonna have to regrade um, all of those problems, probably everything you've graded so far, but at least the ones that you selected that rubric for. Okay, so there are my different things. Hopefully I've convinced you why Gradescope is so valuable. It is a tool that I would never get rid of. Um, our university actually pays for it, but I would pay for it myself if I, if I needed to, because it saves me that much time. So I hope you learned a few things today. Keep an eye out for the 101 and 201 videos. Again, this was just the introduction to get you curious, to get you convinced that you really needed to give Gradescope a try. And those other videos will get more into the nuts and bolts of how Gradescope works. Thanks so much, have a great day.